Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another screencast where I'm going to be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, this data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, an amazing weekly data project in R run by the R for Data Science Learning Community. I'm still um, getting, getting caught up because I took the summer off doing these screencasts and instead participate in Slice, which um, if you haven't seen it, I, I, I did some videos of, uh, of how I participated in Slice this summer and the machine learning contest, and it was a really fun experience. And I'm sure I'm going to have the opportunity to try some more machine learning as we go uh, forward in these, um, in these Tidy Tuesday screencasts. Uh, so remember, one of my favorite parts of, of um, these screencasts is uh, is, is, is talking to you so I can see it on a different uh, monitor. I can see everything people are chatting. So definitely say hi and give your ideas, ask questions as we work through this data. Again, it's really one of my favorite parts of this, um, of this process. So what data are we going to be looking at today? Looks like it's Billboard uh, Top 100. I feel like I've seen this data once before. I can't remember if it was in a Tidy Tuesday or where, but um, uh, I feel it's, it's so it's, it's so familiar, but but I guess yeah, my mom. I I think it's it's been a while, but I feel like I've I've seen this once before. But um yeah, so this is gonna be Billboard chart data by week, the position in that week. Ooh, I might make like a what they call it, a bump chart of a position by week, and um, the song, the performer. Uh, let's see the instance. So the sixth time the song has appeared on the chart, where it was in the previous week, the peak position, I guess that's cumulative peak position and cumulative weeks on chart. Oh, that's really help. This is like a really helpful set of data. And the cool things we've got this audio features. Uh, these I definitely recognize. Actually, a lot of them popped up in sliced episode eight, uh, not with billboard, but just with other data on details in the song where the challenge was predict the popularity of a song based on some features like the dance ability, the energy, the key. Where is this data? Is that from billboard 100? Uh, is that where the data, or come from data.world? Yeah, I've heard a bit about this. Um, that's, um, yeah, I think it's going to be really, uh, really fun. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in. Again, I, um, uh, I'm, I'm still reminding myself how uh, I'm a little bit out of practice. Tidy twos. Oh, uh, oh, I don't have the tidy. Oh, right. I, um, reinstalled R over the summer. So tidy Tuesday R. Oh, tidy Tuesday R. I'm just reminding myself how to, um, package. I, I need to reinstall this. Oh good, it's on CRAN. Oh no, my, uh, my title is wrong. Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? It says so this is great uh, billboard 100. I'll, I'll fix it now. Thanks. Somebody pointed out that the title of the video is wrong. 100 songs uh, in R. 100 songs in R. All right, I tried editing this, uh, the title. All right, so um, Tidy Tuesday R, use Tidy template. Nope, doesn't have it. Mm. Well, I'm just gonna create, create a file. Remind myself how all this works. Look at me out of practice. Well, this is taking its time. Not sure why that's taking so long, but I'm gonna try reopening it. All right, and I'll just use the um. Here we go. I'll use Tidy Tuesday R. Oops, I can just do one of these. And also do library <laughs> tidyverse library. Uh, let's do uh, I like scales, theme set, theme light, some of the other things that I like. And you know I might use dates today, so I'm gonna do library lubricate. Taking a second to download. Oops, I do not need to have it happen twice. Here we go. And here's the data. All right. So it looks like there are two data sets in here, Billboard 
is the first one. So I'm going to spend some time on Billboard, then later I'm going to join it in with the songs, with the other song information. Let's see what we have for a sec. All right, we have URL week. Oh, good, good thing we have some date processing because this is not in a form I'm going to want to use. Week position, performer, the song. I noticed that the song ID is a combination, yep, of the song and the performer. Um, the which time it appears, whereas the previous week and the position, weeks on chart. Okay, all right, so let's, um, yeah, let's get to know this data a little bit more. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna take this and mutate week is gonna be MDY of week ID. So MDY comes from Luberdate and creates, so then I don't need the week ID anymore. And the, um, See some former etc. And I'm just gonna call this billboard. And now I can do something like let's filter for um weak position is one. What song is at the top? So then the um uh then we can see like okay in each week what's the top song? And I might let me see. I might be curious there, like if I counted the song or counted the song and the performer. Yes, so the, the one, uh, I think I didn't know this, the one that stayed at number one the longest was Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. And the, um, then Despacito, so these are the t are the ones that have la that have been uh, at the top the longest. And if I wanted to like focus in just on one song, let's say I wanted to look at Old Town Road and I'd say song equals Old Town Road. Uh, then I might look at here the 45 weeks where it was somewhere, and I might ask a question like, okay, let's look at the week, week position, and put it in a line plot. And yes, yeah, and now I probably, on, on something like this, I'd want to scale Y reverse because I really want, oh, it's top of the charts. See, zero, I want zero going downward, uh, or really one going downward. I don't want like, um, uh, I don't want, I want to think, oh, top of the charts, and then it worked its way down a little, um, a little bit. I wonder when this data ends. So if I, if I look at like, um, it ends recently. So this, so this song that looked like just dropped off the charts, Old Town Road dropped off the charts in January. I believe it is January. I think this is January, 2020. Uh, so the, um, uh, yeah, so that's like the path of one song. And I could throw in something like, uh, well, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, I didn't run theme set theme light, I guess. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is, here we go, uh, add a facet wrap by song. This isn't necessary here, but it's like useful if I want to um, add multiple. So let's pick another song folks like, like a pop, uh, I'm going to do Despacito. And we can see like, okay, this is when Despacito was big and, and you can kind of see it's got a similar pattern of like rapid ascent and then down a bit and then suddenly drops off. Uh, so this is screen size not fully optimized. Am I, am I, is there something I can... Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, okay. I know what's happening here. Uh, shoot, I, I optimized it for a different monitor. So uh, one second on this. Let's see if I can fix it midstream. Um, thanks for letting me know about this. Uh-huh. One moment. Shoot, I'm gonna have to turn it off for one second, fix it, and then bring it back. Uh, oh, that's, oh boy, looking me out of practice. All right, so give me one second on this. All right, I should be back. Hey, I think that's better. I think that fixed it. Let me know if it didn't. Let me know if it didn't. Uh, I really appreciate your patience on that. Okay, and the, um, let's see, where was I? Uh, oh, one sec, yep. All right, so the, um, uh, so then I say, all right, uh, here's two songs, and um, and yeah, what if I wanted to look at a couple other songs? So if I want to say, like, here's my top few uh, longest uh, number number one. If I do this, and then I, I could actually say something here, like semi-join head longest number one by nine. 
by song ID. Oops. Uh, And let's do, hmm, oh yeah, so let's actually uh, add a bit to this where I'll say uh, group by instance, which means that it won't, uh, that it'll separate out. Yep, see like I Will Always Love You popped up twice. Uh, I think this was after Whitney Houston's death. And the, um, uh, and what I'm also gonna do is say scale y, facet wrap scales equals free y. I'm sorry, I meant to do free x. Yeah, so like, let's look at the song trajectories. So yeah, this is, I could say, um, uh, time and billboard position. I'm trying the top six, but let me, nah, let me see that, that that's too, uh, let me try nine. And uh, say billboard position, uh, What are the trajectories of number one hits? So then this is kind of showing like, oh, okay, this is where um, this, this song goes and uh, here we go. So you can see things like, okay, some of them like, uh, whatever this is, something about the way, Kendall the Wind, something the way you look, um, I'm not sure, uh, sure what this was, started number one, then declined. Uh, and then I got a feeling was uh, a lot of them like kind of get to number one quickly, then have a slow decline, then drop off the charts at some point. I'm not sure exactly what causes something to drop off the charts all at once. I don't know the definition of this. But then you have things like I Will Always Love You that was number one for a while in, in the early 90s. And then again, I th uh, then hit it again around um, the... Uh, uh, would, I think it's going to around Whitney Houston's death. So this is an interesting, so but yeah, this is some interesting um, views of like the trajectories number one hits. All right, so that's like looking a little bit at like, um, just understanding what kind of data we have uh, here, and which is already pretty interesting. And then I might also be interested in, let's, let's find some things out about these performers. So what if I want to say, um, summarize total weeks on billboard on top 100 is N and total weeks at number one is sum of a week position is one. So um, uh, at number one. So if I want to say things like, okay, who, which artists have spent the most time at at number one in this period in this period of time? Be like Mariah Carey, The Beatles, Boys to Men, uh, in terms of total weeks, number one. And then I can also say other things like, uh, what else would I want to know by performer? I could want to know something like n songs, so n distinct song. I could do just songs within a performer. Uh, n songs on Billboard on top 100, but I might also want to know n songs at number one, uh, and that would be n distinct song where weak position is number one. So then, then I'm learning like some summary things about these and I can say something like, okay, who had the most number one songs? So the Beatles had 19 number one songs. Um, let me save this, which I still have, wow, I still haven't done. Uh, save with today's date, 09, 14, uh, Billboard 100. So this kind of aggregation, we can say something like, okay, uh, the Beatles, Mariah Carey, Madonna, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, these are the performers with the most songs that hit number one. Uh, so I know about the Beatles, so this data said, I think it said started in 1965. I think I know the Beatles had 27 number one hits because they came out with the one out with the one greatest hits album. I think I had 27 tracks, but 19 of those in the period we were looking at. Um, and um, yeah, so then, then you, you can say some things like, okay, who had the most number one hits? Uh, or than most songs that hit the top 100. Yeah, there's a lot of graphs we can make out of this. Um, so, uh, by performer. Uh, I might want to include something like, let's do a range by n song, who had the most uh, top 100 songs? <laughs> so, uh, Glee is at the top. Uh, so the, um, so I can do something like, let's do head, 16, 
Judy Plot, uh, and songs on top 100. So Glee had no songs at number one, but 183 on the top 100. It's kind of a consistent way to get, it felt like a lot of their songs didn't make the top 100, even though they didn't um, uh, hit number one. I think that's an interesting uh, insight. And then we can say, um, uh, oh yeah, performer, GM call, do a little reordering. Performer is FCT reorder. Performer by N songs on top 100. And uh, Elvis Presley with the Jordanaires has almost as ma has about as many as Elvis Presley. Um, so the, this number of the songs on the Billboard top 100. And we can probably do more than. Uh, yeah, we can do top thirty. Yeah, so the um, so these these are the artists that were able to get on the top one hundred. Well, a lot of singles were able to get on the top one hundred. And we could also look at something like um, you know, we could say number of songs at number one. Oops. Uh, and there it's not as like, um, it's not as simple because you have, because generally an artist will have, you know, uh, something fewer than, te than, than 10, uh, except for a few like the Beatles, Mariah Carey having a number at number, having a bunch of hits at number one. Um, and the, um, but something I'm a little curious about here is like, uh, something a little curious about is like this ratio of, of what percentage of songs made it to number one. Uh, so I'm actually, because cause I, I thought it, found it interesting the Glee cast never made it to number one, even though they had, they, they had a like many hundreds of songs that, uh, otherwise, so let, let's look at this. What if I said N songs of the top hundred that were in the top, uh, let's say of the 50 that are the most reached the top hundred, let's do a, uh, let's do a um, scatter plot. Uh huh. Number of songs at number one and geome text I like check overlap equals true because it's gonna be a little crowded. And uh, let's do, let's make this a little bit look a little bit better. Expand limits. It's kind of try and read it a little bit more, make it a little more readable. Yeah. So um. So one thing we can see here is like okay. Uh, oh, and why did I do top fifty? I was trying to do this by the ones who had the most songs on the top. You know, I don't really need head at all. Giving it a second to load up. Yeah, so we're trying to see, like, okay, there's some artists who have a lot of songs in the top 100, Drake, Taylor Swift, Glee, Cast, but then there are ones with fewer songs, but really, like, had a very high concentration. Um, so like, uh, Mariah Carey had only, uh, whatever this is, 30 songs, but more than half of them, other than the top 100, but more than half of them were number one hits. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see like, uh, yeah, so certainly not, nothing here is shocking in terms of very popular artists. Um, Aretha Franklin, so we have the Glee cast is extreme. Aretha Franklin had 60 or so songs, but only, looks like only one number, number one hit. Plenty of, um, of artists look like had only one number one hit or, had, or had lost songs that got in there, but none. Yeah, so um, so this this teaches us a little bit about about what we might do with performer. Okay, what would I, um, what else might we want to uh to look at here? If you have ideas, feel free to share them. But I've, I've I'm interested in looking a little bit at time. So I'm wondering things like who are the top, who is the the be, the the top performer in each year? And I'm going to think about how would I aggregate top performer? Would it be like total, um. If, if, if I want to say like in each year, group by perform, actually I'm going to start with decade uh, and then I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to work from there. So I do something like decade is um, year 
over 10 times year divided by uh, uh, by 10 and the oh um I don't have a year yet year of week using Lubridate and um, well, one, well, so what, I, what might I want to know about each performer in each decade? Is actually, I might want to know all these things about each performer in each decade. So I can say, like, uh, here we go. I'll call this Summarize Songs. And we can reuse all these verbs, uh, all, all these uh, aggregations. Um, and, you know, I'm even going to throw the arrange in there. It's nice to have a... Um, it's nice to have an arrange. Something's up with what I did. Here we go. Um, uh huh. Let's see. Uh, billboard. Let's see. What did I do wrong? Oh, there it is. Oh, summarize. That there, there it is. There it is. Okay, so um, so what I might want to do is like summarize by performer and decade, uh, and you know I'm going to throw into the summarize. I'm going to throw. I don't like the um do dot groups equals drop. I don't like the the default behavior of keeping uh, it grouped. So dot groups equals drop saved it. Cool. And so now I can say ask a question like um oh so 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 guys can I scale to 1080. 1080p. Let's see. Can I? Uh, there's a question. Uh, thanks for asking. 1080. Yeah, I bet I. Um, I bet I can. And I'm gonna have to turn off the the screen for one second. Here we go. Um, uh, one sec. Am I back? How's it looking for you now? Let me know if it. Let me know if it how, how it looks with the uh, with the downscaling. Uh, yeah, again, I'm, I'm just I'm kind of like I've been shifting between computer between our monitors a little bit, and which is why it's um being surprising. So if I say something like let's let's see uh by the former decade. Yep, that's the plan to keep it deep. All right, so the um. So then I can uh, then I might want to ask a question like group by decade. Um, there's actually slice max where I can say like I want the top total weeks on top 101 and oh uh, n equals one. And uh, here now I can see like okay for each um, for each decade who was on um, who was uh, on the charts the most. Um, and this this would say something like okay. In each uh, in each year, uh, Con Connie Francis in the in the fifties, the Beatles, the Bee Gees, Daryl Hall, Daryl Hall Johnson. I don't know. I don't know that, that artist. Um, Madonna Rascal. Uh, I'm really bad at music. I only recognize like maybe half of these. Daryl Hall. Oh oh, Hall and Oates. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, and what if I want to say total weeks at number one? Who within each decade had the most in number one? These are a little more familiar. Most I don't even know who Roddy Rich is, uh, but yeah. So the um, but I guess the twenty twenties are a relatively short decade. Uh, so if we said okay, who is the performer of each decade? We'd say something like Bobby Darin, the Beatles, Bee Gees, Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, Black Eyed Peas, Drake, Roddy Rich. And now I'm thinking about like, um, I wonder if I want to say like uh. So so let's remind ourselves like who are the top performers? Actually, I don't even need to know that. I can I can kind of ask a question like, uh, what if I did group? I'm just th I'm thinking for a second. Yeah, what if I did um, performer lumped FCT lump of performer by top ten or something like that? Group by performer lump, performer lumped and week. And uh, and now I say no. It's not by week. By year equals year of week. Uh, and I just did like a count. 
I'm interested in getting some kind of area plot of who is on the billboard. Uh, so then I might do something like year n ge um, uh, geom area and fill equals performer lumped. So this this kind of vision of like here are, and a lot of them is going to be other, <laughs> too many are going to be other, uh, so much so that I might filter uh, performer lumped is not equal to other. Uh, and yeah, we can see like, you know, stacking them on top of each other is not, um, not really ideal here. So I'm going to facet wrap by performer lumped. And we'll do 16 performers, and I should do scales equals free y. And you know, it's so like, like um, spiky because artists don't come up with something every year. So I'm going to go ahead and make this deck, make this like, um, let's say five year periods. And I do not need a um, scale fill. I, I don't need, um, oh yeah, so scale fill discrete um, guide equals. Oh, it's not false anymore. Shoot, it's none. I want to get, I'm trying to get rid of the, the legend. Yeah, so this is getting a little bit better. Now, let me quickly ask the, uh, ask, uh, the audience, um, is cast quality got got scaled down. How is is the resolution? I, I'm not I'm not able to see what you're uh, seeing. Oh, I can see what you're seeing by zooming in. It does look pretty pixelated, doesn't it? Can anyone share? I, like I'm able to see on the YouTube. Is this looking really pixelated? I think it is. And this is what I'm looking like at. I'm sorry that I, I keep. This is 1080 by 674. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get the, yeah, I'm wondering like, is there a better, is there a different resolution I can use? Um, it's only 420p? Hmm. Is this, is 1080, I'm really bad at resolution, so I, I, maybe anyone who can help. 1080, 1080 by 674, should I be choosing a different, sorry, should I choose a different one? Like what should the, the resolution be of the base and the output? Yeah. Um, okay. If it if it's if it's working enough for people, yeah. Oh, saying it's the, ah, saying there's some buffering. Let me make sure I'm on the right right Wi-Fi. I'm on the right Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, well, it's it's the um. Uh, for today. So I'll leave the phrases for today. Um, okay. I'm gonna. I'm then I'm gonna return to the to the um. Uh, to the data. Yeah, all right. So let's take a look. Yeah, so, oh yeah. So what I was saying was here's our artists through the year, the decades. And, um, uh, you know, the five years is not an intuitive uh, y-axis. So I'm going to put it by year. I'm going to say year av um, average weeks on week on billboard. Uh, and so here I'm taking a look at the um, at the artists and we're looking at something like all right so these are each of the artists like okay and we can see like okay Billy Joel really big in the 80s Chicago big in the 70s uh, Stevie Wonder huge in the six in the like the 60s 70s 80s and not really since um, yeah we can see like a lot of um our and Taylor Swift uh, been pretty big especially around uh, 2010 to 2015. That was um. I know that that's something when um my favorite uh, Taylor Swift album 1989 came out. Yeah, we getting like a sense of some of these um these breakdowns. All right, so this is looking at, at artists over time. Okay, so we have I think we have two choices. So so that was some interesting like look at at songs over time. Uh, I'm interested in like in in uh something a little more ambitious for today. So I think we have two choices. One is we can do um. 
we can build, uh, uh, we can do machine learning. So there's another data set in here, which is, um, we are what's called audio features, where we actually have some information like the, um, uh, like the genre and the loudness and the acousticness and the instrumentalist, things like that, and we try using it to predict the peak of each song, something like that. So the, um, we could look at, um, could do machine learning to predict each uh, so um, song's popularity, or we could build a Shiny app. I had a really good time in Slice building a Shiny app in like 10 minutes, so we can build, we can take 10, 20 minutes to build a Shiny app. Uh, what do people vote, what do, so um, what do uh, you vote for? If you're, if you're here, uh, what kind of, what are you looking, what are you most interested in, Shiny or, um, or machine learning? Go ahead and vote in the chat. Uh, I'm pretty intrigued by either. I think if I did sign on, yeah, if I did ML, it would be largely about can we predict the peak of a of a of a song based on some some components of it. If it were, um, let me see, if I were doing a shiny app, I think I would do something like it, uh, the ability to explore, but for one performer, because I I want to zoom in on one performer at a time and look at things like by year with the um the number of uh songs they're at, and um. Yeah, a couple of comments that that are voting for machine learning that um definitely convinced for all right. That's I've seen uh seen enough. I've seen plenty of votes for machine learning. Let's do let's do ML. Uh, let's do ML to predict the song's popularity. All right, so this is gonna remind us a little of one of these sliced um uh, episodes. So let's um let's pull it in. Let's what we'll do is we'll do library tidy models. Uh, library when uh maybe text recipes. I'm not so sure what I'm gonna do. Um. Ooh, I mean, I got some late votes for Shiny, but uh, ML is still uh, still winning. I'm also going to do do parallel, register to parallel cores equals, I realize I can use actually eight cores. Um, and I'm going to do um, split is, so we're going to do this, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to do the project by song. So by song is going to be, um, let's see, billboard, Group by both. I like uh, I like that idea. Maybe we will. We'll do ML first. So group by song. Actually, I got a great idea on doing both. And um, group by song and uh, peak is max week position. And weeks is going to be. Um, actually, I like n weeks because n uh, because then you're predicting the. Um, yeah, I might want to do like number n. I might want to predict n weeks, uh, and n weeks. Yeah, I was probably gonna want to do. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think I want to do on a log scale. Yeah, I want to do n predict n weeks on a log scale. So job um task predict the number of weeks. On a log scale, uh, the log weeks. Uh, so I'm going to say log and weeks is log. I like log two. It ends up being um, really intuitive. And now we've got our songs. Um, and I've got the song data set, which is twos data, audio features, former, and all these. Uh, yep. Uh, song ID is what I'm going to want to group by. Inner join with this. Song ID, songs joined. Okay. And I want to predict the log of n weeks based on a bunch of other features. And uh, one thing about, so a couple things about this. Genre and some of these others are going to need to be tokenized, uh, and I've got an idea on how to do that. Uh, yeah, actually, genre is the only one that needs that. I'm not going to use. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the um, I'm going to drop Spotify track popularity because that's um I'm definitely not going to use that uh, and. This, there's a lot of missing data in some of these because only some of them have Spotify and others don't. 
I bet that data is not missing at random. So I'm going to split this, and I'm actually going to do something fun. I'm going to, um, let me see. No, I'm, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be fun. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to split um, initial split songs. Let's see, set seed 2021. Uh, split, test, testing split, folds is v fold cv train five yeah okay i'm actually gonna do four fold let's make it five fold cross validation all right no the gate is big enough no i'm gonna do like three fold cross validation because the data is big fold cross validation for speed uh, and uh, yeah, this, we have a total data set of like thirty thousand. Um, okay, so the um, so I've got my uh, splits. Here we go. And what am I gonna? And I'm gonna jump right to let's do fit an XG boost. So let's actually fit a boosted tree. And the way we go about that is the um, is let's do a recipe. Of um of let's see, log and weeks perform uh ex explained by um uh let's see well let's do it by all and then no let's not uh, I actually yeah I wish I had low I don't actually advance ability plus energy plus key plus loudness plus mode plus speechiness plus dick ness plus I don't know actually a better way dullness plus liveness plus balance plus tempo plus time signature so this uh, I'm not going to use things like performer which I think would would be the best uh, explainer I'm just going to use attributes of the song and the um I also going to want to include the genre and that's actually going to be our our most fun one where I'm going to say genre, let's see, uh, that is going to be fun, but I don't know if it's going to be, oh, let me take a quick look at this data. Um, some of these are miss, some of these are missing everything. Yeah, one thing is I can't do any anything on the ones that are missing, a, uh, that are NA here. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and say filter, looks like most of them are, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say filter not is an A, Spotify track ID, okay, then I'm going to do, yeah, filter not is an A, Spotify track ID, ooh, I love the idea of, uh, from Ronald of using, um, uh, time of the year, so the, um, uh, to throw that in. So let's do, uh, but but I don't have, I don't actually have what week it came, I could get what week it came out. Um, I could we, I guess I could do the week it first started. Sure, why don't I do that? Why don't I say like, uh, first a week started on chart is min week. I like that idea. So then we can say actually like, which week did it start? And we can build some things based on that. Uh, and Spotify genre and week. Now I need to, yeah, I need to run this one more time. Songs join now. Yeah, now it's a little bit smaller. And here we go. Okay. Uh huh. Train and test. And the um. Uh. All right. And now we have week. And what I can do is I can do step mutate month equals at, um month equals like lubridates uh, function for uh, month, which is just month of week. Step rm week, uh, remove the the week and the um, oh. invalid type. See, I've got plus week. That's what's odd to me is that why is it um why don't I say date? Oh, oh, week started chart. It's called right.
Okay. And uh, actually, I can leave in... I can leave in time. Uh, no, I won't leave in time. And um, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a pre-processing recipe. The hard one to pre-process is going to be that that um, uh, Spotify genre. I've actually got a fun approach for uh, Spotify. I've got a fun approach for parsing this, which is the text recipes package. So we do text recipes and step token um so step mutate um, Spotify genre equals step uh, equals uh, string remove. What I'll do is I'll remove the starting string remove all. I'll move both the starting and the ending uh, steps. So there's actually a what we're gonna do with um with tidy models is do prep choose. Uh, oh, step remove all from Spotify genre. Select Spotify genre. Uh, so now I've just removed the start and the end, uh, if any, of like the um, and then I can say then. Uh, yep. Then I can say remove any uh, that are um. Oh, so then I can say step tokenize. Um the uh, tokenized Spotify genre by um, uh, and then uh, I'm going to myself quickly how this works uh, token equals regex options equals list pattern is looks a little like this and now it actually tokenizes it down and then I'm going to do step token filter uh, for Spotify genre. This really um, genre to max tokens equals 10. And step TF Spotify genre. So here now I've turned this, let's do it uh, just five. Uh, now turn this into one hot encodings where it's going to have one for each um, uh, If I run it like this, it's gonna have one for each of those names So it's got all these uh, these features like danceability energy, etc. And um, Yeah, that, that's pretty uh, this is pretty helpful like because now I've actually yeah, I've got this recipe set up uh, So I got a recipe, but now I, I want to put it into a workflow so I'm gonna call this XGWF for XG workflow and do um Workflow for boost tree um, mode, and we have regression. M try I tune the number of tree, uh, uh, the number of, of tries in each, and tune the number of trees. And do learn rate is 0.02. This is a classic like approach I would take. So we've grabbed some features, and now we want to we want to do this prediction. So we want to say xg wf tune grid. Um, Let's see, let me make sure that I run this, yep. And uh, tune grid metrics, uh, oh, and uh, folds metrics equals metric set RMSE uh, for Ruby mean squared error, uh, predicting the log n weeks. And uh, I wanna control the, the grid is gonna be combination of M try is I don't know, two, four, and six, and trees is 50 to 500 by 50. And do a little bit of tuning. Yeah, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but we'll give it, we'll give it just a second. Uh, so let me kill it and just do, let me try this. I like to try this on smaller data sets first. So I have to say like head 5,000, we make, we do, we do it real quick just to like kind of check, check in and everything. I made those folds really small. Uh, oh, and uh, then I do, here we go. 
All right, and this is us like um, trying two and four. Okay, this is just 5,000. I'm going to drop this. And it looks like 500 might be more, tr could be more trees than me, but that, that is on a smaller data set. I'm going to bring it down to 400. I like to try. So you can do as many trees as you want. That's not really, like, that doesn't really hurt it. Oops, I didn't rerun my, um, yep, so rerunning this. So this is machine learning where I'm going to, where I'm, um, using mostly just these numeric features and saying, like, um, like the liveliness, the acousticness, the, uh, valence, etc., and fitting a boosted tree model to say, can I predict the, um, uh, how many weeks it'll be on the chart, on the charts, uh, Ah, uh, so four. All right. So with this much data, the number of trees doesn't matter so much, but it might be kind of like balancing out there. I'm also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop training the number of trees. I'm going to stick to let's say just three, but I am going to tune the num max tokens is the number of genres used, and say say like um, uh, max tokens is one, three, ten. So this is like, um, does having genre actually help us tell how long it's going to spend on the chart? Because we use this tokenized genres. And the answer is, ooh, 10 does best in the, uh, 10 is a little bit better than, than, than the other ones. So what if I tried 3, 10, 30, Three and we try just having more trees and oh let me uh, let me kill that and give it one shot and then I'll, I'll review a little bit what we're what we're up to here so I'm trying out like okay how can I get this uh, root mean squared error of predicting the number of, of weeks on the on the charts uh, how can I improve that how can I um get that up and notice what we did and it took about I don't know about 15 minutes was we defined our problem we said we want to predict uh, weeks to, uh, number of week, uh, log n weeks. We split out our data, and then we said, here's the pre-processing we want to do, which is like pick the month, parse the genre, and tokenize it. Uh, the rest are numeric, and they, they don't, um, uh, they're, they're not particularly difficult to, uh, to, to break down. Um, I'm just uh, reorganizing this a little bit, look a little better. And um, yeah, we're going to try like, uh, we're going to see what, um, how many tokens, how many genres are helpful here. Um, but yeah, our best so far is one, uh, cross validate is 1.3. All right, so it looks like more tokens generally better. That's actually interesting because boosted trees, I usually expect to uh, tokens not necessarily to help. But yeah, okay. And um, it doesn't really matter how many trees we have. Yeah, so what I would do then is I would say like, um, oh yeah, so we, we, we fit our final model by doing like workflow, finalize, workflow, uh, select best tune. Uh, oh, XGWF. Fit on train. And then I would apply this and say uh, augment on the test data. RMSC of the log and weeks by dot pred. And 1.24 is that's our um, our combination and let me show like uh, what that actually looks like in um, what that means is let's see here we go gg plot uh, the um uh, this is our dot pred this is our actual what because what does that root mean squared actually mean it's actually I don't know it's not um it's uh, I can be off by a solid amount. This is like our predict. So let me let me do this. It's like labs predicted log. We um. Let me see. I actually do we. Let me do this as two to the power of. Make this a little bit more readable. Weeks on top one hundred. Actual weeks on top one hundred. And I neglected to do scale x log 10, scale y log 10. 
I did two to the power of because they had log two before. And we do a geom smooth method equals lm. This is by song what um and I'll make the points a little transparent to uh to get this across a little bit better. Yeah, we um so there is there's definitely like a, a positive relationship. We're able to predict the weeks on the um the weeks a song spends in the top one hundred. Uh, interesting this spike of all these ones that spend exactly some number of weeks there. Okay, uh, but yeah, this is our our um. Uh, this is this is the fit, and the last thing we do is model interpret is interpret, uh, fit the features, and so I've got this XG fit, and I can do extract fit um, of the engine version, and then XG boost has this function XGB, um, uh, I'm remembering now its importance, but I actually can't pipe into it because uh, I can, but it'll be mod equals dot that awkward importances so what I'm gonna do is get put put together what are the importances of each of, of um of the features here and uh, uh that that is uh that is not helpful the way that it, that it pops it up uh, and then I do ggplot gain feature geom call after doing feature equals FCT reorder feature gain we have 43 features, and we learn how important uh, each of them is. <laughs> this is fun, like post-teen pop, which I wonder if that like represents glee or something like that. We see acousticness, valence, post-teen pop, danceability, speechness, etc. are some of the features that are, that are most important. A lot of genres uh, end up with, um, and uh, include this one is means. There was no genre, um, but yeah, some of the other the other ones get some solid um, scores. I didn't include things like artist here because I felt like that would be a little bit uh, data leakage. You know, like oh yes, Taylor, if it's Taylor Swift, they'll get to the top. It, I mean, there's, there's definitely truth to it, but um, yeah, but this is yeah, this this is one way we could look at um, importance. Okay, we're out of time, so no shiny app today. But let's quickly review some of the things that we that we did. So I. Um, uh, we were interested in like in uh, first was getting a feel for this data over time. We said here of those songs that spent the longest at number one, they uh, some of them started out at number one, some of them hit and then went back down. This kind of this trajectory chart, um, how long they spent. We get the um, uh, we took a little bit a little bit of a look at performers. So which performers had uh, the most songs in the Billboard Top 100 or the um, uh, oh this should have been most uh, songs reach number one and we saw this is a much smaller list the Beatles having lost number one and not a lot and uh, not a lot of others and then we looked a little bit like oh yeah Glee is an outlier of lots of songs the top 100 no songs hitting number one and with their other outliers anything like that um, doing a doing a, um, a scatter plot we looked then we then looked a little bit at like at performers over time um, oh, uh, this plot's not a little bit yet. We looked a little bit at aggregated performers over. Yeah, this is that scatter plot. We looked a little bit at aggregated performers over time. Did an area plot, which I decided was better faceted than, uh, than stacked, and kind of look at like um, at when was each uh, musician. You know, now that I'm seeing this, I really want to do a quick step where I say, uh, performer lumped is FCT re reorder performer lumped by um year, because I really want to do like. Uh, the oldies to the the like the Beatles all the way to Taylor Swift this kind of ordering and um, yeah then we then uh, look then finally we decided to do an, uh, the machine learning task where we landed on one organized by song we uh, did some splitting because uh, we had to choose some like criteria we were trying to optimize we did some splitting and then we did a re uh, data cleaning a uh, boost tree did a little bit of tuning uh, and um, Discovered that like okay we can do um what matters is include more genres honestly I probably would have included more genre, even more genres if I'd known uh if I'd spent a little more more time doing this but the um and it looks like the number of trees doesn't matter so much and uh, yeah use that to, to tell um to build a predictive model and uh, take a look at importance 
yeah, so that was, um, yeah, that was a, a quick version of, if, again, if you're interested in machine learning, definitely check out my sliced screencasts where I spent two hours exploring data and, and building models and trying to improve them. But this was a chance to use a little bit of tidy models and machine learning. All right. Uh, thanks so much for joining. I hope you all had fun. I certainly did. Uh, be sure to, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week.